It's actually very interesting, the masculine experience, because I like to believe that most men on the planet have lived a semi-similar timeline. All of us, as men, experience a very similar human paradigm, and that is that most men are born and you're not important, and then you go to school and you fall in love with some girl in school and she fucks someone else, and then you realize that all the 19-year-olds you want when you're 19 are with older dudes because they have cars or whatever, whatever, and you go through this experience of getting your heart broken and losing your girlfriend, etc., etc., and many men latch on to some average bitch or accept they're gonna have their heart broken forever, but some men decide to become so big and important and strong and irreplaceable that they never have to suffer heartbreak again. Because every man deals with heartbreak and deals with sadness, but how you use that energy is the differentiation, the differentiator between humans, right? You are feeling the same pain that many men have felt. Every man out there has had his heart broken and understands how difficult it is as a man. But the difference between me and you, and perhaps some of the other men out there, is that certain men take that anguish and take that sadness and understand that energy cannot be destroyed, it can only be converted, and use it to build themselves into a man of absolute standing and power, as opposed to sitting around jerking off like you just told me you do. You are a waste. You are wasting your energy. Heartbreak is unlimited motivation. If I was heartbroken, it's been a very long time, but if I was heartbroken, I'd be in the gym every morning. I'd be a beast. I'd be running. I'd be working. I couldn't sleep. I'd be an absolute animal and you're heartbroken and what are you doing? Jerking off like a fucking dumbass. The difference is as a man, you must build yourself into a man of credibility, which means to build yourself into a man of standing, we all start in a very, fairly similar position. I became me through tedious, arduous, difficult, never ending work. You are wasting your time. You know why God made your girl leave you? Because he wanted to show you that you ain't shit. He wanted to show you that you are human and you're fallible and that you're very replaceable. So he decided to make you fall in love with a girl and he decided to make her leave you to show you that you are a dickhead. Now it is your job to look at the board, understand what's happened, say, I understand God, I deserve that. I'm glad she left me and I'm sad because I am a dickhead and do something about it. Because if you refuse, if you ignore God's message, next time you fall in love with a bitch, guess what he's going to do? He's going to make her leave you to remind you once again that you are a dickhead. Every single man out here, if you're upset that your girl's leaving you, God is reminding you that you aren't worth shit. You need to get up and work so hard that even in the eyes of God, he is proud of you. God loves his creations which show him their true potential and beauty. By getting up and trying your absolute best and becoming a man of moral standing, he will reward you and bless you. If you continue to be a dickhead, God will remind you you're a dickhead. So God just broke your heart on purpose to show you that the way you're living your life and the man you are simply are not good enough. What have you changed since? Nothing. Fucking nothing. You think God's going to forgive you for no reason? You think God's going to go, it's fine. He hasn't learned his lesson. He hasn't changed. He isn't even trying very hard. He's not up early in the gym. He ain't doing nothing. It's fine. Let's just let him fall in love and let's make sure the girl doesn't fuck someone else on OnlyFans this time. No, sir! This is going to repeat endlessly. It's a cycle that will not fucking change until you take the message from God and become the man you're supposed to be. You must stop being a dickhead. You deserve what's happened to you. You deserve how you feel. All of it. When I was 20, me and my girlfriend broke up. I was with her for four years. I, I, I couldn't sleep. I could, and this is before social media. You couldn't just chase a bitch. Like you, that was it. She's gone now. <laughs> like she moved. I didn't know where she lived. That was it. And I couldn't sleep. Now I, it wasn't like I was crying my eyes out, but I was just, where's my my hoe at? I couldn't sleep. Need something else to do. Need something else to do. So I thought, fuck, I'll hit the gym at 6 a.m. I'll hit the gym at 3 p.m the gym at 8 p.m. I had nothing else to do but fight. So I took all that trauma, all that heartbreak, and I molded it into becoming a world level combatant, right? What did we talk earlier about how trauma can mold you? How trauma can be a fantastic thing. Heartbreak, depression, sadness, these are all fantastic motivators. I'm telling you why they're a fantastic motivator. You go to a guy who's heartbroken, he has all the motivation in the world to send 300 text messages. <laughs> he has the motivation, he's putting it in the wrong place. That's 300 cold emails you could be that, sending to someone that's a bitch That's business. a lot of money you could have made. Yeah, I'll tell you right now, some of the, the greatest accomplishments in my life have come after a heartbreak. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. it's, it's that fuck, I call it fuck you energy. Take that and you're like, I, I, because some guys will get butt hurt about that and they'll sit there and they'll wallow in self-pity. I've always thought the correct application of that energy is, okay, prove that she made a shitty mistake. Mm -hmm. Go out and become fucking millionaire go out and become a kickboxer go out and become mm -hmm. a porn star whatever and then she's gonna look around when she's 50 pounds heavier in a year's time and be like motherfucker ah, i left him 
I let him go. Yeah. And, you can, and, and internally, yes. up, be happy. My ego could be like, <laughs> Yeah, I got you. Life, <laughs> life's, life's gonna hurt you, and how you use that pain is completely and utterly up to you. You can use that pain to galvanize yourself as a man and become a better man than you've ever been. I'm not saying that I'm only successful because of some chick. I'm saying that every single time that I was heartbroken, I never wasted a second. I was never wallowing. Especially as a young man. We, talk, we talked about this on the show. You're going to get your heart broken as a young man. I've had it happen to me. Yeah. We've all had it happen to us. And, and it's not even about anger towards a girl. Me and Tristan talked about this on the podcast that we did together, Gentleman Game. It's seven years later. Because as a man, you're going to get your value later. Yes. Right. So if you use that energy to put all that work in, these girls, they come back around and I love to see them come back. Oh. Not because I'm in love again, just because it's like, you know, no, I like, told yeah. you no. so. Yeah. No, I, I said this, like anybody who tries to get revenge on a woman or on a woman, way. it's a you're an, that, that's incel energy. That's that's a wrong way of looking at it. The only revenge you can get on a woman who breaks your heart is success. Success is the best revenge. Just level up slowly. And when she messages you, you got two choices. You can either say, sorry, baby. You're not my type anymore. Boom, you win. So that's the answer to the question. Put, put a plan together for the heartbreak if it comes and make sure that plan is constructed. Everything we've been saying on this podcast is true. Trauma's going to come, pain's going to come, and you have to use it in a constructive way. Still to this day, that's all I would ever do. If, if something bad happened to me and I got really upset, I would find the most constructive possible outlet. And yep. that's a conscious decision. You have to have the emotional control to make a conscious decision in that direction. Women fuck men they respect. That's it. They don't fuck men they like. They don't fuck men they love. They fuck men they respect. If she loves you and likes you and doesn't respect you, she will not have sex with you. I have women who respect me and fucking hate me, but they're here every time I call. <laughs> so if they respect you, they're going to sleep with you. Yeah. And this is something that's biological and evolutionary. They fuck men they respect. So how do you make women respect you? Well, first you have to be worthy of respect as an individual. There's no hack. If you're worthy of respect, you're worthy of respect. But secondly, you cannot allow blatant disrespect. So if you allow her to blatantly disrespect you and you tolerate that, then you're setting a precedent, which means, well, why would I respect this guy in the first place? Yeah. I say this to guys all the time. I've, I've had loads of guys who come to me for like coaching and stuff, and they say, you know, my woman doesn't respect me, da 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 And I say, look, it's much harder to fix something that's broken than just never let it go wrong in the first place. Right. So from the second you got together, you should have been a man, and you can be, you haven't got to be an asshole, you haven't got to be aggressive. I'll sit with a girl and very politely say, look, if we're going to be in a relationship, if I'm going to take you seriously, you're not going to have male friends. If you want to hang around with a whole bunch of men, then yes. I'm not going to take you seriously. What do you mean you won't take me seriously? I mean, I mean, we can fuck, but I'm not going to be. I'm never going to look at you as serious material. So yeah. it, it's, the the idea, the decision is on you. If you want to be serious, you're not going to talk to those guys. You want to talk to those guys? I'll fuck you sometimes. You, you decide. And I lay it on them. Now, if they choose to ha keep all their male friends, then that means she's chosen these friendships over me. Which means sooner or later she was going to cheat anyway. Like, how long until she jumps on a new dick anyway? So why yeah. would I even be upset about it? But most men are too scared to just put the ultimatum down. And not you haven't got to put the ultimatum down in some scary, big, brash way. Just be clear. Look, any woman I'm with who I take seriously doesn't hang around with other men. So yep. it's, it's your choice. And, and this is the point. But most men don't say anything. They let it slide, and they let it get completely broken. And they come to me and say, well, how do I fix it? It's like, well, you have to make it not let it get broken in the first place. You need to understand your boundaries and expectations as a man. And you have to set them and you have to make sure she complies and sticks to them. And if she doesn't, you're going to have to find somebody else. If you're stuck with one option, the one chick you met, yeah. you know, then it's, she might be a dickhead. Some women are just dickheads. The key is this as a man. This is the bottom, bottom, bottom line. Most men are not prepared to walk away. And if you're not prepared to walk away, you don't have any weapons. Exactly. If she knows no matter what, you won't leave, then what weapons do you have? Anything you say, shouting, screaming, yelling, go, going out away for a few days, whatever. She knows you're going to come back. She, you have no weapons. The second, if, imagine a girl came to you and she said, no matter what you do, no matter how many times you cheat, no matter what, da, 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 I will never, never leave. Right. Think of all the shit you do. <laughs> Think of, I know I do. Yeah. So this is the point. So as a man, if you're never prepared to walk away, you're never going to be respected. Respect and the woman thinking, you know what? He might just leave are linked they have to be there so you have to mean what you say you have to let her know look there's some things i won't tolerate and if you fuck with me i'm gonna walk away and if you walk away and she doesn't chase you then then she's gone yeah. at least you saved yourself a fucking nasty divorce and getting cheated on and all that shit just end it then and there and save yourself a bunch of time but men are too afraid to, to pull the plug on it because they get addicted to the pussy and they don't believe they can get any more pussy and they get all messed up but you have to be prepared to walk away as a man so you have to look at any relationship you're in and say okay I'm a nice guy. I love her. She loves me, but I have boundaries. And if she fucks with them, I'm going to have to walk away.
And that's the truth. Mm. Otherwise, you're never going to be respected. I've and, been head over heels in love with women yeah. and left them and never yep. got them back. And they never yep. knew. Yep. That's life. That's, that's how it goes. It. I've been that's head over heels in love with women. I didn't want to lose them. And they weren't listening. So I walked away. And they didn't chase me. And I lost them. But that's it. My honor is intact. My pride's intact. And now I don't give a fuck anymore because time's a hero. That's life. So exactly. it's better than staying in a relationship, which I'm not happy in because she starts acting like a fucking fool. And it's yep. kind of like, I use chess analogies a lot, but it's kind of like chess. If you're, in, if you're, in, you're playing a game of chess and you're in a losing position, and the only hope you have of winning is a big sacrifice, you give up your queen. And you don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's the only hope. You're better off making the sacrifice even if you lose, because if you don't, you're just going to slowly get ground down and definitely lose in the end. Right. Like, do you, do you love that pussy so much you'd rather delay the breakup by seven months and lose without any pride or honor? Yeah. And leave without any pride or honor while she cheats on you? Isn't it better just to say right hand in the air, you're not talking to that guy anymore? See, the end is coming. If she chooses to talk to that dude over you, the end is certain. So can you have enough balls to just say bye and at least leave with your head held high? But right. this is another thing, man. It's, it's crazy. These, these men have never been through any kind of emotional trauma. So the idea of breaking up with a woman is, is big to them. I've, I've, I've been through, when you've been through real shit, a breakup just doesn't become that real anymore. You know, I've had people try to kill me. I have stab wounds. Tell me again about this girl who doesn't text you back. Like, who gives a shit? There's, there's, people, like, there's people in Syria getting bombed. Yeah. You know, like, you have to get some perspective and just realize you're being, like, there's, there's real trauma out here in the world. Terrible things happen day after day. And here you are, alive and breathing and perfectly healthy, and you're going to cry over some bitch? Just man up. How long? How long will you mourn? You should have overcome your grief by now. How long will you weep? How long will you be bitter? How long will you be angry? How long will you sob and mourn and walk around enraged? What good is it getting a divorce if you're still going to be mad? If you're still going to be writing notes and wondering, did you see him and who was he with? You are not divorced. I don't care what the paper says. You are still married. How long? God says, how long will you mourn over a door I have closed? How long? Will you mourn over a marriage that's over, a job that's gone, a girlfriend that left, a boyfriend that left? How long, how long will you be angry and frustrated and build your whole life around something that is dead? How long does it take to get over a person how long will you put your future on hold, mulling over your past? How long I came to get somebody unstuck. I came to get somebody free. You cannot spend your rest of your life grieving over who didn't love you, who wasn't there for you. You're stuck. God did not create you to be stuck with a heart full of grief. There are some times in your life that you got to get up, wash your face, go on with your life. Life is too short for grieving over who didn't want you, who left you, the job you didn't get, the house that you didn't close on. Hello! Wasn't fair? That's okay. God will be your vindicator. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to it. Living in mourning is going to keep the new doors from opening.